So the battle for Devin Campbell is one that I've been interested in for quite some time, and that interest was only furthered when a top two of Texas and Oklahoma were named. Anytime you have bitter rivals going after a highly regarded prospect, you can bet I'm interested. And today we found out that it was ultimately the Texas Longhorns that win the battle for the five-star offensive lineman. A massive win for Steve Sarkeesian and company. But it's not all a loss for Oklahoma as they add in three very talented players today that we need to talk about as well as LSU adding in a top 10 player in the nation. We need to break it all down. But before we do, as always, you know the drill. I want to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Why for yes, in for no. First and foremost, because we have two questions today. First, are you surprised that Devin Campbell ends up at Texas? And secondly, are you surprised that Brent Venables was able to get a top 10 recruiting class given everything that happened at Oklahoma? I can't wait to hear from y'all. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoy the content, like and comment down below. Those interactions are massive for content creators such as myself in both getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But... Having said all of that, we have got a lot to break down, and we're going to start with Devin Campbell going to the Longhorns, because Devin Campbell was maybe the biggest prospect for the Texas Longhorns, and especially when you look at the season UT just had. A lot was left to be desired with Steve Sarkeesian's first year, and when we go to look at some of the areas that need to be improved upon going into year two, it's tough to dismiss the offensive line as the biggest culprit that needs to improve. Now, Texas has done an excellent job on the recruiting trail of going out and getting offensive line talent as they've added seven offensive line prospects into this class. Five-star Kelvin Banks, five-star Devin Campbell, four-star Neto Umazulu, Malik Ogbo, and Cole Hudson to go along with three stars Cameron Williams and Connor Robertson. Now, whenever you have a hole, such as the Texas Longhorns had on the offensive line, and you're able to go out and identify it with highly regarded prospects such as this, it should excite a fan base, but now it's the development portion that needs to come. But when we look at this battle, when it was Texas and Oklahoma, anytime you have those bitter rivals, I'm always intrigued. That always just adds a layer of entertainment in these recruiting battles that I really appreciate. And that is only furthered when we talk about who it was duking it out in this battle. Forget that Texas and Oklahoma are bitter rivals. Even if they weren't, if I came to you and said we have Kyle Flood against Bill Biedenboe in an offensive line recruiting battle, that alone should excite hardcore college football fans. Bill Biedenboe is an individual that has put multiple guys into the NFL and has a lot of development under his belt to be able to use as a pitch. Kyle Flood, just coming from Alabama, put together a top-tier offensive line class for the Tide that consisted of the number one tackle, the number two tackle, the number two guard, and the number one center in the nation, and now he goes to the Texas Longhorns and puts together an offensive line class that looks like this. That shows you when we're talking about offensive line recruiting, these two are absolute heavyweights. You sprinkle in that it's between rivals, and you can see why I was so excited about this battle in particular. But this is a huge win for the Texas Longhorns. As I said, in my opinion, Devin Campbell was the biggest need for Texas in this class. They could have missed on a lot of other areas, but this was an area that they absolutely could not afford to miss. So when you mix in what a big need it was, plus what Kyle Flood does on the trail and the NIL opportunities Texas is offering, it's easy to understand why Devin Campbell is choosing to stay home and play for the Texas Longhorns. But all is not lost for the Oklahoma Sooners, and there are a few reasons why. First and foremost, if we want to talk about the offensive line front, Oklahoma is still in the battle for Connor Lee Jr., a five-star offensive lineman, one of my favorite players in the entire cycle. That's a battle that will stretch further on and one that we must keep watching. But if we want to focus on just today, the Oklahoma Sooners got three big wins. First off with R. Mason Thomas, flipping him from Iowa State, and then secondly, going and getting Jamarian Burt, and finally, Grayson Holton. Now, when we're talking about the first two and Jamarian Burt and then R. Mason Thomas, that shows this staff's willingness and ability to be able to go into the state of Florida and pull talented prospects. R. Mason Thomas is an edge rusher who looks to be a massive addition to this Oklahoma class, and whenever you can get in him, such as former Oregon commit Grayson Halton, that's where you can really start putting together a nice picture for what Oklahoma has in mind. 
And when we look at this class for the Sooners, getting in a guy such as R. Mason Thomas and being able to flip him from Iowa State is huge, and it should provide Sooner fans a reason to be excited because not only is there a positive trend happening with this staff and their use of recruiting in the transfer portal, but you're now seeing this from recruits as well. An established coaching staff such as Iowa State lost a prospect to Oklahoma with Brent Venables, Chavis, and Todd Bates. So that's an awesome get for the Oklahoma Sooners, but it didn't stop there. They also went into Florida and got Jamarian Burt, a three-star athlete and someone who looks to play defensive back for the Oklahoma Sooners, giving them even more depth at a position of need. And lastly, Grayson Halton, the four-star defensive lineman that was a longtime Oregon Duck commit. When Mario Cristobal left the Ducks, a lot of prospects were left up in the air. And one could argue Halton is a victim of the coaching carousel to which many prospects this year can claim. But ultimately, it was the Oklahoma Sooners that were able to capitalize on that uncertainty that was provided when Mario Cristobal left the Ducks. Halton is a highly talented prospect, someone the OU fans need to be very excited they get in. So yes, Oklahoma would have loved to get in Devin Campbell. He would have been a great win for their class. Even though you lose that battle, the day is far from a loss as you were able to get in three talented prospects that look to be a big piece in your class. What's more is Oklahoma now sits at the number eight class in all of recruiting. And if I was to tell you a month ago when Lincoln Riley left, that OU would be a top eight class in the nation given everything they've experienced, a lot of people would have called me crazy. And here we are today. But the last thing we need to talk about today is Brian Kelly winning a huge battle for LSU in Harold Perkins, a top 10 player in the nation. Harold Perkins has a rare ability to do everything, it seems. He excelled at running back. He excelled at linebacker. He excelled putting his hand in the dirt and coming off the edge. This is one of the more versatile players in the entirety of the nation. He can truly do it all. So what he's utilized as for LSU's defense is really anybody's guess as far as the exact specifics of it. But what I can tell you is we'll be seeing just how versatile he is. This is a huge win for Brian Kelly getting in a guy that was formerly committed to Texas A&M, and we see what Texas A&M is doing with their class in a situation where Brian Kelly hasn't even been the coach of the LSU Tigers for a full year. So having said that, that is an awesome win for the Tigers, a major win for LSU and Brian Kelly and a defensive piece that we are going to be talking about in the near future. So when we look back on today, we have got a lot to talk about. Devin Campbell going to the Texas Longhorns, giving them an incredibly solid offensive line class, but what a battle that was. Kyle Flood versus Bill Biedenboe, and Kyle Flood now gets to talk about back-to-back elite offensive line classes that he's had the ability to sign. But it's not a total loss for the Oklahoma Sooners, because not only are you still in the battle for five-star offensive lineman Connor Lee Jr., you also got in three prospects today in Grayson Holton, Jermaine Burt, and then R. Mason Thomas. Three very highly touted prospects, three individuals every other institution in the nation would have loved to bring in. And finally, Brian Kelly dancing his way into the heart of Harold Perkins gets in a top 10 player to come and play for LSU. I can't wait to hear from y'all. Hop down to the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. That's it. See you.